What's up, Internet Basketball Junkies? In today's video, we look at a continuity action geared around getting the ball inside. A post player can get three decent looks on the inside in one play call. It is designed around having a system of play that includes two big men that we would want to have featured inside. Having two big men to feature allows the ball to be entered to either side, and the post player on that side the ball goes to is the featured player. If you like the action you're seeing on film but only have one big man you would want to go to for touches down low, you would just have to make sure the play is entered to the side of that player each time. Pin down screens are used to get a clean wing entry with the big man starting on the wing and screening down simultaneously. If you don't see a lot of denial defense, this step could be eliminated and the set would start in a 1-2-2 alignment with the bigs on the blocks. The point guard enters to the wing and goes away to the weak side corner. We tinkered with having the point guard having the option to go to the strong side corner or the weak side corner, which changes some things uh, as the set evolves, but we ended up just sticking with having the point guard always fill away to the weak side corner eventually. On the entry pass, the first post up option presents itself. After down screening, the post player wants to shape up on the block and call for the ball. If he is open and has good position, we want to throw the ball in there right away. This may be the best post option to get the ball inside, just simply screening down and sealing. So we want to get it in there if it's open. We call this the direct entry of the offense as it gets the ball inside the quickest and most conveniently. Once you throw the ball inside, you may want to establish some rules for what the perimeter players are to do if the ball goes inside. We just stood and spaced and played out of double teams if they occurred, but there are definitely opportunities to cut or to move if you think that will take pressure off of your post players or create opportunities from the movement. All right, internet basketball junkies, as we take a break from this video, there's a few things that I need from you. One, give this video a like. Two, make sure to hit the bell to get notifications on future videos. Three, check and double check to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And four, click the link in the description to my self -I store. I have detailed basketball coaching content for sale, including a strength and conditioning guide for high school coaches, a detailed guide on running a 1211 diamond press, a guide to the circle motion offense, a detailed guide on running a 1-3-1 half court trap, a guide to the European ball screen offense we called Wave, a half court deny and disrupt man-to-man -man defensive system, and much, much more. That link is in the description. Please take a moment to check that out. See if there's anything that you might like. And as always, don't hesitate to shoot me an email if you have any questions on this offensive action or any of my other videos on YouTube, you can catch my email address on the opening screen or the closing screen of this video. Now back to the content. Now let's look at the second option for getting the ball inside. The second option presents itself on the reversal pass to the weak side post who is flashing high in the form of a high-low pass. The center on the block wants to transition from sealing on the block to sealing in the middle of the paint. He's looking to seal his top foot over the top foot of the defense so that he can show his chest to the passer unless he is fronted. If he's fronted, he may want to use the front to his advantage and wedge his defender out towards the perimeter, creating space for a lob pass over the top. The lob pass into the post is definitely more challenging, but if it's completed, there is usually less resistance at the rim to combat the finish. The skill of the passer, which is the second post player, is for sure a major factor in this decision whether you want to throw this lob pass or not. On the reversal pass, the auto backdoor and fill can create a shot or a closeout to attack. This is something to keep in mind. While this offense is geared around the post and playing inside, there is an opportunity here if well executed. The third post option happens once the full reversal is made. The post wants to follow the ball across the lane and shape up for the ball. While he is shaping up in the post, a double screen away is happening on the weak side. This keeps the defense busy and also presents a chance for a shooter to come off of a stagger screen. Creating the option for the player screening in the stagger to slip to the basket can add depth to this concept. Even if a shot doesn't materialize from the stagger screen, the defense 
is still occupied from defending the action, leaving your post in more of an isolation situation on the block. For that reason, I think this is the best time to get the ball inside in the offense. Simply, there are less eyes on the action going on inside while the post-up is taking place. While we watch a few more clips of the double-away post-isolation option of this offense before we end the video with a few extra opportunities I think you can find within the offense, I wanted to take the chance of promoting the Selfie Store one more time. Click the link in the description. I have detailed basketball coaching content for sale. I think you'll love it. Check it out. Click the link. Here are a couple other considerations about the offense. Using the pin down screens to enter the offense not only allows for clean catches on the wing, but it also may provide a driving opportunity for your point guard. You want him focused on getting the ball entered to the wing, but if he has a blow by on his defender, that may be something to take advantage of. The help defense is occupied getting through the screens and is not set to defend downhill penetration. The next thing you want to do is be able to treat your pin downs that you use to enter the ball to the wing as scoring opportunities. If you paint these in such a way that the players coming off the screen believe that the shot may be available to them, they will come off the screen uh, with a little bit more energy and a little better footwork looking for their shot instead of them thinking that they are just a vessel to catch the ball to throw it on the inside. So it's all about how you frame it to your players as you teach the offense that this is a scoring opportunity for them to read the defense and make a play, not just a catch to throw it into the, into the post player. You also want to have the consideration of your secondary post player, his ability to shoot the ball. If you don't have a second post player that you want to throw the ball inside to, you may want to put a player in this spot that has some shooting range. To make this high-low pass, you want to have space to throw the ball inside, and if it's a non-shooter trying to throw that ball from the top of the key, it's going to be hard to find a passing angle to get it inside. So having a second big that can shoot or another player filling the spot that can shoot, I think will help get that high-low pass to happen more often. The last small note about this offense is that the concerted effort to get the ball inside promotes the defense fouling more, trying to prevent the positioning down low, and promotes more free throw attempts by your team due to the shots coming around the rim more often. Thanks for breaking down this film with me.